I am an attorney at law by profession. Um, and um, I'm also the Deputy General Secretary of the Commercial and Industrial Workers Union. So I'm also a unionist. Okay. Um, and I'm also a member of the Liberation Movement, which is a left uh, feminist uh, uh, movement of women. So that's how okay. I would introduce myself. Right. Uh, so Swastika, uh, how can we change the direction of this entire, what we call the, the struggle? I don't know whether it's uh, it can encapsulate everything, but uh, yeah. beyond um, taking Rajapaksha's out, um, there yeah. should be a larger agenda for us to drive the nation towards. What are your views? What are the things that we could do in maybe short term, medium term, long term? What are the things that we could do to get a better grip of the situation and have a better uh, nation for all of us? So this uh, crisis is uh, right now what we are all feeling the pinch of is the economic crisis, right? Um, so this crisis is essentially an economic crisis. But how this crisis was brought about was because not only because of bad uh, policy management, it was also brought about because of bad politics. They always say this that uh, uh, a substantial amount of the problem was because uh, the state was a centralized state. So uh, one of the demands which you see on in golf face and you, you see in other places is the is the call for go to go home. And what does this mean? What does this mean when they say Gota must go home? And who is this Gota by Rajapaksa? He's our executive president. So this crisis is also a crisis of uh, bad politics. It's a crisis of what happens when you centralize the state to that extent where one person has uh, amassed power, uh, is beyond accountability, and can do anything and take any decisions, uh, which would bring a country to a standstill and, and would bring thousands and thousands of people to destitution. So um, so that for me, that is how I would define this crisis. Not only a, a, a concern of bad economic management, it's also an um, issue of... Uh, uh, bad politics and the fact that we have allowed um, the centralization of power, which is also fueled by uh, racism, because the state is also Sinhala Buddhist. So when you when you have a Sinhala Buddhist state, when you have a state uh, which does not take into consideration the concerns of minorities and the concerns of vulnerable groups of people, then that is also fueling into that uh, bad politics. So that's how I would uh, define this crisis. What can we do on the medium term to change the trajectory of this um, uh, struggle to have a better uh, future for all of us? What are the things that we could do very specifically? So um, one of the things uh, which, which I could see immediately being done is that, uh, which I also keep saying, is that the executive has lost confidence of the people. The executive presidency or the president, Gota Bay Rajapaksa, has lost confidence of the people. So uh, the thing which I keep repeating and saying is that the executive has lost confidence and the people have, in a way, taken back the sovereignty from the executive and he's asking to resign. We don't want you anymore. Please resign. Please uh, go away from that position. And the parliament is not, it can do something. They can either impeach the president, um, they can pass a no, uh, they can uh, bring an amendment, it could abolish the executive presidency. And this crisis has gone on and still the parliament is dragging its foot on it. So that is something which can be immediately done. There are 225 people in parliament. They can pass a law to abolish the executive presidency or they can bring in an impeachment motion and get rid of Gota by Rajpa. So that is something which can be immediately done to resolve the immediate demands of the protests which are going on. But that is not going to solve the economic crisis because we are in a uh, deep, deep uh, problem. It's not something which is going to be resolved in one or two years. So one of the things which we have been suggesting is that the country has defaulted on debt just before going into IMF. And we all know that IMF is not, um, IMF gone into other countries like Argentina, like South Korea, like Greece, and have wrecked their economies. So yes, right now we don't have an option and we need to go into IMF. But do we have an economic plan to, to tell that even if we go into IMF, how are we going to come out of it? Or are we going to just go and ask the IMF to prescribe Austerity. Are we going to ask the IMF to prescribe um, cutting costs, cutting government expenditure when that is what we need right now? So that is something which we need to think about in the medium term. But also, I'm also looking at, because I work with a lot of workers, 
we are also looking at a large massive scale unemployment which is going to affect thousands of workers in this country now uh, when in 2019 and 2020 when the uh, covid pandemic hit our country the business community who has been um, enjoying concessions from the state whether it be tax concessions whether it be custom concessions whether it be flexibility on labor whether it be the fact that unions can't function freely inside the free trade zone so our business community has been doing business and uh, amassing wealth at the expense of the workers if you see the wages of the workers is very very low so the workers do not have the buffer to protect themselves from this economic crisis so even when you look at the pandemic what happened during the pandemic the business particularly the export sector said our orders are getting cancelled uh, brands are cancelling orders so we can't survive it so uh, immediately what did they ask we need to cut down wages and wages were cut for workers almost by 50% so workers actually walked into this crisis with not even the basic um, reserve of savings workers walked into this crisis the crisis now they don't even have the basic savings a buffer of savings which they could have had if their wages were not cut that is a free trade zone workers. when you look at the plantation sector government passed a um, wages code decision stating that minimum wage should be 1000 now did the planters association pay did the plantation pay no they were paying 500 600 under various pretexts so the plantation community is also walking into this crisis without having um, a land to live in without having a house over their head without having basic decent without having savings and on top of the uh, microfinance and the debt question so the workers are impoverished the workers are workers have become absolutely destitute and they walk into this crisis so the the proposal which we uh, two days ago we launched a position paper on behalf of uh, free trade zone workers what we have been saying is that the business community must be held accountable they merited they they uh, they uh, benefited out of low wages they benefited out of uh, legal concessions which the government has given the, the government has always looked into the welfare of the business community um, under this principle of trickle down economics and that has not trickled down to the workers so it's not enough for mass and brandix and uh, various other uh, companies to simply put out statements saying that we are standing with the country we are standing with um, uh we are standing with the country during the crisis it's not enough for them to put fancy statements on social media and the media it's time for them to take responsibility they have savings the central bank has put out a report saying that they have um they have uh, kept wealth outside the country so it's high time without without uh, you know without once again try it's high time they step up and protect employment and not talk about re- relocation because the factories have already started talking about relocation when the country is in a crisis so that is not something you can't put out a statement saying that we stand with the sri lankan people and internally you are having a discussion about relocation and leaving thousands and thousands of workers this year you can't do that so that is what we are demanding from the business sector some of the companies have even told their workers they have enough money to bring fuel so if you have enough money to bring fuel you have enough money to stay on in this country and protect employment So that is something which you are looking at in the short term. That is also something which you are looking at in the medium term.